Hallelujah, people of God. Psalm 55. We are actually on the 55th day since we began season 6. And today is a powerful yet simple message. Cast your burden upon the Lord. We thank God as we pray. Father, open our eyes to see wonderful things out of your law. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 55. For the director of music with stringed instruments, a muscle of David. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me, and I am distraught at the voice of the enemy, at the stairs of the wicked. For they bring down suffering upon me and revile me in their anger. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death assail me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, Oh, that I had wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and the storm. Confuse the wicked, O oh Lord. Confound their speech, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they prowl about on its walls. Malice and abuse are within it. Destructive forces are, are at work in the city. Threats and lies never leave its streets. If an enemy were insulting me, I could enjoy it. If a foe was raising himself against me, I could hide from him. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I have enjoyed sweet fellowship as we walk through the throng of the house of God. Let death take my enemies by surprise. Let them go down alive to the grave, for evil finds lodging among them. But I call to God, and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning, and noon. I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. He ransoms me unharmed from the well battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. God, who is enthroned forever, will hear them and afflict them. Men who can never change their ways and have no fear of God. My companion attacks his friends. He violates his covenant. His speech is smooth as butter. Yet war was in his heart. His words are more smoother, are more soothing than oil. Yet they are drawn swords. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fail. He'll never let the righteous fall. But you, O oh God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of corruption. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men will not live out half their days. But as for me, I trust in you. There is a complaint about concerning false friends. False friends. False friends are a challenge to a lot of believers. And one thing that I would like to mention to you, that the best salve for every kind of soul is prayer. Prayer is the greatest medicine for any kind of soul. Broken hearts, situations concerning false friends, any kind of matter, cast your burden on the Lord. One of the greatest griefs is to find ourselves deceived in some, in, in some who have made great pretensions to friendship in the name of religion. But if our minds are stayed on Christ, we may ever have peace of heart. For his peace passes all human understanding. That's why it tells us in the book of Philippians 4 verse 6 and to 7, Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, through prayer, with supplications, make your request known unto God, and the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Beloved, David's suffering at the hands of false friends here is a type of Christ's sufferings. Ahithophel, 
who is undoubtedly referred to as a type of Judas, for they both hanged themselves. In the book of 1 Samuel, we read about Ahithophel, the counselor of David, that he betrayed David to his son Absalom, and then later on he committed suicide because his, his, uh, his, um, his advice was not followed. Beloved, cast your cares, cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will watch over you. Well, just allow me to flow through Proverbs chapter 9, because as we do, we have been moving through this entire book throughout. And one thing is about Proverbs chapter 9 from verse 1 to 18, talks about the wisdom being Christ and sin as rivals for the soul of men. As I call out that wisdom is calling and folly is also calling. I invite you to scan through Proverbs chapter 9 to be able to see these amazing nuggets that are there. Let me just pick one of them at random. It says in verse 10 and verse 11 of Proverbs 9, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Beloved, I pick those two verses and give this conclusion to us. That Christ and sin are both seeking to have an uppermost place in the soul of man. We are therefore concerned to put a value. We are concerned to put a value. Yani, we are concerned to put a value upon our own souls and to sit down at the rich feasts provided at the wisdom's table. There is no true wisdom but in the way of Christ. And there is no true life but in the end of his way. This is one truth that I want to bring to you. One highlight from Proverbs chapter 9 from 1 to 5 is that heaven is the place where wisdom was, has prepared many mansions. By the word wisdom, I replace, I put it in the place of Christ. Christ is the wisdom. When you see people doing things in this world that are without wisdom, is because they don't have Christ. Because in him is the full wisdom and knowledge of all mankind. Heaven is the place where wisdom has prepared many mansions. As you shall see in the book of Ecclesiastes 7, where it says something good, I will tell you shortly. It says that wisdom has prepared many mansions. Christ himself is a sacrifice which has been killed, and it is his flesh that is meat indeed. His disciples have gone forth with the invitation to the gospel feast. Even the simple being freely invited. That's why in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, it takes us through the wedding banquet of the Lord. And I invite you to also look at that by the grace of God. Cast your burdens unto the Lord, for he cares for you. Ecclesiastes 7. Again, this is another contrast of wisdom and folly when you read ecclesiastes chapter 7 and you read proverbs chapter 9 it's like a continuation in the simplicity of this message tonight beloved of god i come to bring this very very high focus upon us cast your burdens upon the lord Prudence is recommended as a means of avoiding much vanity and vexation in the world. The best way to save ourselves from the vexation which the vanity of the world creates is to be able to make wisdom our shelter and we maintain a strict discipline of our passions. Wisdom is a defense. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 12. It says, Wisdom is a shelter, as money is a shelter. But the advantage of knowledge is this. Wisdom preserves those who have it. Beloved, again, I also want to bring to your attention Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 29, which is going to help us to be able to see this. It says this, This only have I found, God created mankind upright, 
but they have gone in search of many, many schemes. Beloved, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. We move on to the book of 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 19. Hallelujah. No, no. Are we in chapter? No, no, beloved. We're finally here. Hallelujah. We are here in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1 and 36. In fact, if you are giving a standing ovation, we would give a standing ovation to this chapter. Because tonight, you will see, this morning, you will see, this afternoon, you will see what happens when we cast our cares upon the Lord. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Hallelujah. First then you have seat belt. Because this one is a ride into the deliverance power of prayer. This is a ride into the time of ability for you to be able to hear and hearken from the spirit of the living God about his goodness and mercy when children of God call on his name. Second Chronicles 20. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This place, I just love it. You know, I just love this place. I want to stay here. I want to stay here in the place of 2 Chronicles 20. <laughs> so let's go. Maybe it's your first time to be in 2 Chronicles 20. So let's go together. It says, After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites with some of the Meunites came to work war on Jehoshaphat. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Hazon Tamar, that is in Eged. Alarmed. Jehoshaphat resolved <clears throat> to inquire of the Lord and he promised and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem <clears throat> at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said O Lord God of our fathers are you not the God who is in heaven you rule over all the kingdoms of the nations power and might are in your hand and no one can withstand you O our God did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham your friend they have lived in it and built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether by sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before the temple that bears your name and will cry out to you. In our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now, there are men from Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir, whose territory you will not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by, by, by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For they, we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do. But our eyes hey, are upon you. Hallelujah. This is in the first. This is a prayer. This is a prayer you need to. Hallelujah. This prayer. Oh my God. I know this prayer. In verse 13 it says. All the men of Judah with their wives and their children and their little ones stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jahaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeliel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite and descendant of Asaph. And he stood in the assembly. Hallelujah. Now the Spirit of the Lord has come and the Lord has, you know, identified the priest that is living right and he's released his Holy Spirit in him. And then he said in verse 15, Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, 
march down against them. There will be a climbing up. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight in this battle. I'm speaking to somebody prophetically. It says you will not have to fight in this battle. Take up your positions. Stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. They also fought, bowed with his face to the ground. Hallelujah. And all the people... And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and Korathites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah. And all people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out ahead of the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Hallelujah. They went ahead of the army. Praise went ahead. Verse 22. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Amnon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. The men of Ammon and Moab rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped, <laughs> they helped to destroy one another. Hey, look at that. The men of Ammon, the men of Moab, they rose up against the men of Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army they saw, only dead bodies lying on the ground, no one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went off to carry their plunder and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. On the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Beraka, where they praised the Lord. This is why it is called the valley of Beraka to this day. The valley of praise. Then, led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem, returned joyfully to Jerusalem. For the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps and lutes and trumpets. The fear of the Lord came upon all the kingdoms of the countries when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. Then and the, aim, and the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace. For his God had given them rest on every side. I pray for you today. May God give you rest on every side. As you cast your burdens unto the Lord. May he cause even your enemies to fight one another. And they help to destroy each other. You don't have to fight. Verse 35. So Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 35 years old when he became king of Judah. And he reigned in Jerusalem for 25 years. His mother's name was Azuba, son of Shishi. Son of Shishi. Shishi. Hey, where? Shishli. <laughs> well, that's a tongue twister for me, brother. Lemuel, you are watching. But you try and read it. The Azuba, daughter of Shil 
he yes shield he not shishli it is shield he so he walked in the ways of his father Asa and did not stray from them. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. The high places, however, were not removed, and the people still had not set their hearts on the Lord for their, of their fathers. The other events of Jehoshaphat's reign, from beginning to end, are written in the annals of Jehu, son of Anani, and which are recorded in the books of the kings of Israel. Later, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, made an alliance with Isaiah, king of Israel, who was guilty of wickedness. Uh -huh. He has gone ahead, they have not removed the wicked evil altars, and then he has gone and connected himself with a wicked man. Listen to verse 36. He agreed with him to construct a fleet of trading ships after they were built at Azion Gibar. Eliezer son of Doda, Dodavahu of Maresha prophesied against Jehoshaphat saying, because you have made an alliance with Ahaziah, the Lord will destroy what you have made. And the ships were wrecked and were not able to sail to trade. Beloved, look at this. We are just human beings who sometimes don't understand. Instead of staying on the path of the God of Israel, this man Jehoshaphat, after seeing a vast army destroy itself, there's no other king which saw this victory. He goes and makes an alliance with a wicked man called Ahaziah. And because of this, God says, you know what? This stuff you have built, I'm going to destroy it. I will destroy it. It will not set sail. There will be no company that is going to be coming out of you because you have given yourself to this man. You know, Ahaziah. Beloved, you have to be careful when we have these victories not to be able to make joints, you know, make connections with Isaiah. Isaiah is actually means Jehovah has seized. He's arrested by the Lord. That's the name in the Hebrew. This man that he went to be friends with. Beloved, faith takes God's bonds. You see this kind of war? I come to assure you, God is about to release to you victory that will allow you to have plunder, so much plunder that it takes three days to carry. So much plunder. Knowing that God's bonds, the faith, it takes faith for you to get the bonds of, of to get God's bonds, you know. Knowing they're as good as ready money. In 2 Chronicles chapter 2 verse 10, verse 19, it says, the Levites... The children, the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. This is the thing we ought to do. You need to sometimes free yourself to go to a place, Sister Zoe, where you can lift up your voice and praise God. Hey! Where you can lift up your voice without fear what will people think about you, if you're crazy or not. But lift your voice loudly because you can see it is a strategy of prayer. If the battle is God's, we are on God's side. We may be certainly, yani, we may be certain of shortly being made more than conquerors through him that loved us. This is the victory, even our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, we need to believe. Second Chronicles 2 verse 20. You need to check it out. The valley of Baraka. It's important to see this. We are perpetuated for encouragement of succeeding generations. They even put a place and call this place the valley of Baraka. That generations to trust in God and to remind, and to remind us that our praises should be as often repeated as our prayers. We ought to have times when we are just praising. We are times where we are just calling on the name of the Lord. We move on now to the book of Acts. Acts, like I mentioned to you, is one of those places that we are still acting, even today, as the living saints of God. Yesterday we saw, we saw about that beggar who was healed. Now we see about Peter before the council. I will not expound on this. I will proclaim. 
I will proclaim. So that you can also get revelation. The Holy Spirit is also speaking to you as you find time to read his word. The priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John because it was evening. They put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. And the number of men grew to about 5,000. The next day, the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the, key, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, say to them, I love this part, listen, rulers and elders of the people, if you are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone that the builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation, ribarayari. Salvation is found on no one else. For there is no name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled ordinary men, hawakuwa wameenda shule, wale walikuwa ni wavuvi wa samaki. They were unschooled ordinary men. They were astonished and they took note that this man had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there before them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and they conferred together. What are we going to do with this man? They asked. Everybody living in Jerusalem knows they have done an outstanding miracle and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading... Any father among the people, we must warn this man never to speak any longer in any, to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was actually miraculously healed <laughs> was over 40 years old. He had lost 40 years for that time. And now he was walking again. What a testimony. Remember this. Cast your burdens upon the Lord. The cripple cast his burden upon the Lord and he was healed. Jehoshaphat cast his burden upon the Lord and he was healed. Wisdom is a mansion. Wisdom is a shelter. You need to understand this. Jesus is our shelter. Acts 4.23 On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in, God, in prayer to God. And this is the point where you should not miss a prayer meeting. If you hear of a prayer meeting anywhere, don't miss it. Because there is a biblical foundation to raising voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they say, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord, against his anointed one. This is in Psalms 2. 
Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided before should happen. Now, Lord, Consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word. Hey! With great boldness, Radi Bozai. This is a prayer you need to make for yourself. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand and heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders. Through the name of your holy servant, Jesus, after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and speak the word of God boldly. All the believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was given upon them. There were no needy persons among them. From the time to time, for, for, from time to time, those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to everyone as he had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cephas, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Beloved, there's a man called George Muller, that lived in our time and generation that did exactly this principle. Acts chapter 1, beloved. Peter has been persecuted at the Shadnidren and it continues preaching in Jesus' name, forbidden. Sometimes I see people are afraid to preach the gospel. Don't be afraid. The Lord is with you. He'll give you boldness. The more we witness about Jesus, the more the enemy will come to try and put us down. But therefore, let Satan's agents ever be so spiteful. As witnesses of Christ, we must continue to be resolute for the Holy Spirit may be counted upon to enable us to do our part. Persecution gives wings to the truth. As much as they have slaughtered people in the name of Jesus, like in the place in Fiji, because of that, a big revival came upon the land. I will point out one striking fact from Acts 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other name, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Those who are eternally undone, who do not take shelter in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and make it their refuge and strong tower, only by embracing him, and him only receiving his doctrine is salvation found for any of us. We head now to bring a quick summary of Ephesians 2, 1 to 22, as I encourage you to read it as the Lord leads you. Grace by faith. Beloved, a state of sin apart from Christ is a state of spiritual death and bondage to Satan. Whether you are healthy, strong, a big king, a president, a member of parliament, but without Jesus in your life, you are in a state of sin. And if you're in a state of sin, you're in a state of spiritual death awaiting the next death. Ready bondage to Satan. A great and happy change is possible on the basis of of Christ's finished redemption, whereby men are quickened to eternal life by faith apart from their own works. God the Father is the author of the plan. Christ the Son laid the foundation and the Holy Spirit brings everything back, raises everything in this superstructure. Ephesians 2 verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through, our, through Jesus Christ our Lord. One great purpose of Christ's salvation is to reveal in ages to come the exceeding riches of God's grace. If all men were saved, it would never be made to appear that we did really deserve to die. In spite of the cross, we 
angels and the universe would doubt it. The loss of some men through rejection of Christ sets the doubt at rest and proves to all eternity that all those who are saved were by nature the children of wrath as even the others. So we have not, God does not send anyone to hell. The moment sin came through, through the, first, the fall of the first man, that is when everybody was condemned to go to hell. But it's through Jesus only that we can escape this, one, this wonderful, uh, this great, great wrath of God. Colossians, Colossians 4, Colossians 4. Again, this is a call for consistent Christian living. We cannot be lacking to have friendship with other fellow servants in the Lord. It is a great refreshment under the sufferings and difficulties in the way of the Lord. It is good for you to have friendships. It adds much to the beauty and the strength of the gospel ministry. When Christ's servants are loving each other, you know, being able to work together easily, by the grace of God. Beloved, I come to mention to you just one verse. I'll not mention many. Because I want you to remember, cast your burdens upon the Lord. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. It says in the NIV, Colossians 4.2, Devote yourself to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Cast your burdens upon the Lord. Revelation, Revelation 9. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet. And I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and the sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke, locusts came down upon the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. And they were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any, pla or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not given power to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like the sting of a scorpion when it strikes a man. During those days, men will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth, and they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails like stings like st and stings like scorpions, and their tails, they had power to torment people for five months. They, has, they had king over them, the angel of the abyss, who in the Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek, Apollyon. The first war is gone, is past. Two other wars are yet to come. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet. Release the four angels who are bound at the river Great Refrites. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this hour, very hour and day and month, were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of mounted troops was 200 million. I had that number. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were very red with dark blue and dark blue and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of the mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths and their tails, for their tails were like snakes having heads to inflict injury. 
the rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent. And the work of the work of their hands, they did not stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood. Idols that cannot see or hear, nor did they repent of the murders, their magic acts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Beloved, Revelation 9. Something that we ought to know that it will be so fearful and unbearable. Will the conditions be in the great tribulation? When satanic powers are unrestrained, let me tell you, there will be no 150 days of Psalms in the great tribulation. There will be no word of God being proclaimed because the church of the Lord Jesus will have been raptured taken with him to go and prepare for the millennial rule back on the earth. But for this one time that this great tribulation is there, the only way that you can cross over is by your death. This tribulation, I'm telling you, you don't want to wait for it. For me, I'm not going to be here. May the Lord give me grace to cast my burdens to the Lord, all my cares to the Lord, that you too will cast your cares to the Lord. Because men will long for death and even try to commit suicide. But they'll find the power of self-destruction was taken away from them. Happy are they who shall escape all these things that shall come to pass. Through true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to give you that opportunity to escape this great, great tribulation that shall come. The trumpet wars. Revelation 9 verse 12, it says, One war is past, and behold, there come two wars more thereafter. Beloved, one of the things that I want you to understand, Revelation 9 6, it says this, And in those days men shall seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Yani somebody will throw himself from a big building. We 100 floors come and smash down, pa, break into pieces and not die. So they collect his body, put him there. He's going to not die. He's not going to have an hospital. He's going to stay there alive, broken, no hands, nothing. Kill yourself, take a gun, shoot, pa, the head goes apart. You are still alive. This is how it looks. Dangerous time. Why wait for that? Why wait for the great tribulation? <laughs> Why wait to wish death? Cast your burdens unto the Lord. While there is time, give your life to Jesus. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I believed you are there watching me. Maybe many, many years have just come across this video. You then know that how you came and landed on this video is because of the Holy Spirit. I want to lead you to the Lord now. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart. God raised you from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, as we've come to a close of this broadcast, I come to encourage you, cast your burdens upon the Lord, for he cares for you. I will give you these last two verses of Psalm 56, 55, that indeed you may meditate upon them, and even you may write them in the tablets of your heart. You may make a t-shirt out of them if you like, but don't forget these words. It says this, cast your burdens on the Lord. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. But you, God, will bring down the wicked into the pit of decay. The bloodthirsty and deceitful will not live out half of their days. But as for me, I trust in you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning. Share this video and be a blessing in every way. Please do drop me questions on the comment section or comments or something that has come across your spirit as we are reading also you can write to my whatsapp even plus two five four seven two two zero eight seven zero eight seven and that will be a blessing in every way
Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. Hallelujah. Cast your burdens hey, unto Jesus, hey, for he 